Well, today we're on our way to the United States Antarctic base of McMurdo Station. This place is huge. It's pretty much its own town. In the summer, it is home to more than a thousand people. So we've driven over the hill from Scott Base to come check out the Query Science and Engineering Centre, aka the Query Lab. Nareira, Motorubai. Here we are at the Query Lab. That's this building behind me over here. This place was named after glaciologist and geophysicist Albert P. Query. Alison? Hi, Sunny. Tēnā koe, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm oh, very good, you. thank you. Great. It's nice and warm in here. <laughs> Compared to outside. Yeah. So here's the laboratory where all the scientists that study biology, geology, glaciology, atmospheric science, they do all their work right from this building. Sunny, I'd like to introduce you to Amy, and she can tell you more about her work. Amy, Hi. tēnā koe. Hi, Sunny. So tell me, what are you doing here? We are working on marine animals that live under the ice. The two main animals that we're studying are these animals right here. This is called a sea slug or a nudibranch. A nudibranch is a snail without a shell that crawls around on the bottom of the ocean. And because they don't have a shell, they need defenses from things that would eat them. And they have poisons in their body that oh, wow. would poison a fish or something that tried to eat them. Because I'm holding it now, am I going to get any of its no, poison? No, just don't eat it. Right, okay, just, just don't, don't eat, eat it. it. Okay. Luckily, I've had lunch. <laughs> well, I'm going to pop this back in because it's freezing, and now I know how cold the water is. Yes, the water is very cold. Here we go, put them back down. <laughs> okay, what's this spider-looking one? All right, this animal is called a sea spider, and I'm using these forceps to pick it up because I know the water is really cold. <laughs> and a sea spider, is a relative of a land spider. Right. But actually, they haven't been closely related to land spiders for millions of years. So right. they're very distantly related, but they have eight legs. And so everything that you would usually put in your body, right. like your guts, yes. your stomach, they have it in their legs instead. So their stomachs go all the way down to the tips of their legs. They have a big thing like a nose up here at their head that's called a proboscis. Okay. And the way that they eat is to walk up to things and they just stick their proboscis into it, bite a little hole in it, and then suck the body fluids out. Kind of like vampires underwater. They won't bite you. They've never bitten a person, as far as I know. <laughs> we like them. So apart from hanging out with nudibranchs and sea spiders, what else do you do? We hang out with those a lot in lab mm -hmm. and with other kinds of animals too, but we have to collect them so that we can work on them. So we have to collect wow. them by scuba diving. Yes. It's very cold. Oh, it would be. You ever had an ice cream headache? Yes. Yeah, oh, immediately, everywhere. <laughs> but you get used to it and it's really beautiful. ice, so the light comes down through the ice. It's like being under a giant crystal with light coming through it. So the reason that we're collecting these big adult animals is because we're studying their babies. And the babies are with the adults. This is our wet lab. This is where we study the animals and we bring them in. They're Antarctic, so they have to be cold all the time. So this is actually a refrigerated little table here that we wow. keep the water on to keep them cold. And then this here, this beautiful animal, is a sea spider, but he's upside down. And these two little clouds of like, look like fuzz mm -hmm. that are under him right there are babies. Probably got like a thousand little babies on there. And they develop until they're old enough to live on their own, and then they just drop off. Oh, whoa, yeah. Yeah, they're all like hugging each other. Yeah, that's how they stay on dad. They just grab onto each other. So why are we focusing on the babies? Well, these really early stages of animal development are often very sensitive to small changes in the environment. They don't have a lot of defenses. And so we're really concerned about how small changes in the environment here in the Antarctic may change how they do when they're growing up. And if the babies can't grow up, then the species can't survive. So climate change is going to play a big role in the development of these guys? We think it might. Well then, let's go talk to someone about climate change. Tēnā koe, Anne, how are you? I'm doing well, Sunny, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. So tell me, what's this? Okay, so this um, sort of 
spaghetti of tubing is mm -hmm. um, our experimental setup. And what we've done here is we've kind of simulated what the oceans are going to look like in the next sort of 80 years from now. Wow. So in each of these buckets, we have fish. And so these different little baby fish oh, wow, yeah. are being raised under either um, ocean warming conditions mm -hmm. or different CO2 scenarios. And what do the different colors mean? Well, so green, this is good to go. This is right now. Right. This is yellow, so it's a moderate kind of scenario. And this is our worst case scenario. This is red, this is stop. Whoa. So if we don't do anything and we keep emitting CO2 the way we have been, this is kind of a scenario that we might end up with. So this is a kind of our worst case scenario. Danger zone. Danger zone. Oh, this is so cool. And it's, you know, of course, we've got a lot of time before mm. we're gonna be under these future conditions, yeah. but we wanna kind of know how would you do right now if you were exposed to those conditions? And from the Query Lab at McMurdo to a science camp at Cape Evans, it's a short scenic flight to check out some more science happening out on the ice in a science tent. Andrew, Tenakwe. Sunny, how are you? Oh, good. Well, freezing actually, but it's good to be here. Tell me, what are you doing here? Firstly, welcome to Cape Evans. Thank you. What we are doing here is climate change science. And how about we go check it out? Yes, please. Let's go. Okay, Sonny, welcome to our science tent. Thank you very much. The first thing we're going to do for our health and safety, we'll put on some life jackets. Alrighty. A little bit smaller than what I'm used to. <laughs> wow, Andrew, please explain to me what this is. We've cut a hole into the ice. That took us about a whole day to actually cut down into the ice. Yes. And what you can see there is, is the Southern Ocean. And what's really, really cool is at the bottom of that ice, and you can just see there that brown colour. Yes. That is microscopic organisms. They're creating the oxygen that you and I are now breathing, but they are also a source of food for the entire Southern Ocean. In terms of a food chain, there must be a beginning, and that's what they are. Is this what climate change science looks like? Absolutely. So we want to know how happy, how healthy, how many of these microscopic organisms are there. And so that's what this ROV is for. So we can send that down through the hole and then we can take really high quality images of the algae that are on the underside of the ice. The happier they are, the more of them there are, the more food is available for things like penguins and seals. It's amazing that not only do we have a top-of-the-range science lab here in Te Tiri o Te Moana, but that scientists are using sea slugs, sea spiders and fish to learn more about climate change and our planet, Toki. Nga Tino Mihi, New Zealand on air. 